Well, this is Johnny Moore here for 100 Huntley Street. And one of my favorite things about this program is that you can day in and day out, turn on the television screen, go online, and hear from some of the most amazing Bible teachers, Christian authors, and leaders in the world. And today's guest is all of the above, a favorite of 100 Huntley Street. And today we're talking about his brand new book called Is This the End? Signs of God's Providence in a Disturbing New World. It's an amazing book. You want to definitely check it out, but you're going to get to hear about it firsthand. Dr. Jeremiah, thanks for being back on 100 Huntley hey, Street. Hey, it's great to be, to be here. So my favorite thing about this book, okay, is it is like entirely biblical and yet it's entirely relevant. It's, you've said it's ripped from the headlines. Mm -hmm. Well, that is true. And the, the way we designed this book was in an attempt to answer questions people were asking us about what was happening. It, it, this is an unprecedented time, Johnny, and nobody knows what to do because nobody's ever been there before. And yet the Bible has some wonderful information that speaks into every one of these issues. And that's how we constructed, first of all, the first half is, is God finished with America, and the second half is God finished with the world. And, and the whole book is a question, right? I mean, the yes, book is called, is. is This the End? And, right. And, and this is a question you're hearing at a much more frequent rate now than, say, five or ten years oh, ago. Oh, absolutely. Because... Well, first of all, you know, this all kind of just started to build up in 1948 when Israel got back into her land. None of the stuff that we read about that's going to happen could have happened without her being there because so many of the prophecies are, they're determined by Israel's presence and now Israel's there. And the Bible also says, and this is in the chapter on Israel, that Israel not only must be present in her land, she must be prosperous in her land. That's very interesting. A lot of people skip over that one. And Israel is now more prosperous than it's ever been in its history. God says in his word, I will bless you more than at the beginning. Hmm. And, and uh, in this book, I cite some of the evidences of the wealth of Israel, what God is doing there with this miracle people. And then the Bible says Israel has to be at peace in her land. Obviously, we haven't gotten there yet because that won't happen until she makes a covenant with, with the Antichrist. And in that time of peace, will turn away from war and concentrate on her prosperity. And at that moment, the coalition government will come, to, come against her. But that whole story is told in that chapter on Israel. And you move effortlessly in this book between theology and between, you know, the, just the contemporary politics of our mm -hmm. time. I mean, this, this, this is a book where you have a chapter on Russia, you've got a chapter on Israel, you've got a chapter on, um, on persecution, you've got a chapter on ISIS, you've got, I mean, literally, you take the Bible alongside the newspaper and you mm -hmm. help make sense of an incredibly anxious time. Well, that's very kind. I, I try to do that. I, I think sometimes today, if you're a student of the scripture, you can almost have the Bible here in the newspaper here. Hmm. And this happens and you say, like for instance, so many people in our culture were so taken by surprise when Russia, once again, reappeared. Yeah, I mean, this is like old history, right? Oh, yeah. It's like the Soviet Union. They're right. gone. Not and, anymore. And now Putin's on the scene. Somebody said he's like a bear who's been deprived of his cubs, <laughs> and he's trying to get them all back. So we have the stuff happening in Ukraine, and then all of a sudden Russia's in the Middle East, and, and Russia's involved with Iran. All of this is, is spoken about in the Scripture. And it's so um, amazing because... There's nobody today who would ever have predicted any of that. It's not just, you know, coincidental. This is, this is overwhelming. And every time you turn around, something else is happening. And you think, oh, my goodness, I remember where that, I remember where that is. So the Bible is, is right on target with everything that it says, and we're getting to live out some of it in our time. It, it was really interesting to me when I was reading the chapter on Russia, you know, for instance, because... I mean, you, you, you weren't writing this book yesterday. I mean, this book is, you finished this book months ago. In July, yeah. Right, right, it's, yeah. it's really amazing. But, but it, 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 <clears throat> it's almost prophetic. I mean, you, you're describing something that everyone is talking about and will be talking about for a long time. And yet, you know, it's a very anxious time. Even the titles of some of these chapters are a little anxiety producing. But this, but this is not an anxious book at all. No. You know, again... It's all a matter of perspective. And when God's in the picture, you, you walk away and you feel, you, you feel concerned about what's happening, but you don't feel 
uh, you don't feel defeated or you don't feel anxious because you know God is in control. In every one of these situations, there's so many God moments that you just, you can't, you can't even describe it. And it's, it's, for instance, you're talking about Russia and, the, and, and Russia comes against Israel, like she's going to annihilate her, even like we hear today, we're going to wipe Israel off the map. Yeah, almost she, every day. So oh, yeah, and, and when you see the coalition of armies that are coming against her, you say, Israel is finished. And then God shows up. And you know what? I'm, I'm becoming more and more excited every time I turn around, Johnny. God is good at showing up. You know, in the, in the darkest nights, in the most difficult times, God likes to show up. And when he shows up, everything changes. I re when he showed up in my life, my whole life was turned around. When he shows up in a church, when they finally get rid of all the announcements and everything else and they make a little room for God, mm -hmm. when God shows up in church, everything changes. And when he shows up in our lives, we discover that uh, we, we, we kind of have a peace that passes all understanding. And that's what we've tried to say in this book. We've tried to present the presence of God against the backdrop of a very dark world. Hmm. And that's where we live. That's who we are. That's what's happening. To ignore it, that's not rational. That doesn't help. So we don't try to dodge the bullets, but we, we, we show everybody where the refuge is and, and go forward. Yeah, and, and you and you have chapters on all these relevant, contemporary, alarming issues. Mm -hmm. But one of your favorite chapters in the whole book is a chapter on revival. Yes, it is. Um, it's kind of like this. At the end of the first section, which is on America, here's revival. At the end of the second chapter section, which is on the world, here's the rapture. Two great linchpins for a Christian. Revival and the rapture. If, <laughs> if it doesn't happen here, it's going to happen here, you know? <laughs> Either way, we're good. <laughs> this is our safety net, if you yeah. will. But revival, I think we're in the greatest place. And I think you're the one that told me recently that a very famous pastor you know well is predicting that 2017 may be, in his mind, he thinks it may be the year of hope and, mm -hmm. and, and it may be the year when we finally recognize uh, the truth that if God's people uh, who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and ask for God to forgive them, he'll show up. And that's what we've been talking about. And I believe that we're great candidates for revival because all of the revivals, you know, the book of Second Chronicles is kind of like the biblical handbook on revival. All the revivals that are in, in Second Chronicles, including Josiah's, and all the, all the movements that have happened in our country, five to be exact, they all started at very, very low places when all hope seemed to be gone and there was nothing left except God. And when God showed up, everything changed. And a lot of, um, I think a lot of people have a perception that when someone writes a book, like, is this the end? You know, they're sort of, um, you know, trying to um, use anxiety, you know, to induce more anxiety mm -hmm. to, they're sort of playing on the fears of people. But that's not the case at all in this book. I mean, mm -hmm. every chapter, even when you when you talk about really terrifying things, like terror, mm -hmm. a very terrifying thing that's a reality in all of our world today, you, you always take that thread all the way, all the way, all the way back to God's providence in a disturbing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. new world. Mm -hmm. And That's what our hope is. You know, I'm not interested in writing a book to scare everybody to death. I'm interested to help them understand what's going on and get, a ri get rid of a lot of the non-truth because in all of these issues there is a lot of non-truth error. When you get rid of that, that's a good step in the right direction. And then you find the truth that's in the Word of God. That's another good step. And then you realize that God is involved in all of it. Uh, that's what I hope will happen. I don't think people are basic. You know, I've, I read, I've read a book this morning, uh, just a couple chapters. It's all... Uh, pie in the sky, by and by, uh, stay pumped up, you know, don't dig your heels in and all this kind of stuff. It feels good for a moment, but when you put it down, y you just have the sense that that's not real. Yeah. We, I don't want to write something that's not real. I want to deal with, with life as it is, but I want to also remind everybody that the same God who has always been there for us is for us now. And you're known as a Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you, you are a trusted voice. Thousands and thousands of people listen to your radio program every day. Millions, millions of people, in fact, on thousands of radio stations. You know, there has to have been pressure through your ministry to 
kind of move away from the Bible a little bit, and yet you've always just stayed really grounded. Let me tell you about a crisis that's really very much in the in, in our history. When we first started on radio, we didn't have very, we didn't have no money, we didn't have any organization, and what we noticed was if I preached on something like the family or 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 love then people would respond and we would get we'd get donations in the mail. And one day I realized that was a tremendous, tremendous temptation. And my son and I and all of us who work here, he said, let's let's form a group of people who can support us regularly, no matter what we teach, and then let's just teach the whole counsel of God. And that's what we've done. We know that some series are going to be responded to more than others, but we also know that what's in the Bible in its totality is for us and that mature Christians are not built by camping out in Revelation or um, in Genesis. Mature Christians are built by teaching the whole counsel of God. And then when you have partners who believe that and give you the stability to do it, it set us free. And the Bible's never let you down. I mean, No, it has never let us down. You just no. flip through it and you see stuff for today, stuff for tomorrow. Right. And this, this book is that. I mean, it just has a little, little something for everything, a lot of hope. A lot of sense of com complex issues. I mean, you get a whole chapter on on immigration. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, one of the most. We'll have to talk about that another time because we're running out of time. So, mm -hmm. but but you just you just go at the issues everyone's talking about in a very balanced biblical way, and you just help us get through it all. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's that's a gift you give to the body. Well, I hope that's what God does with it. I want it to be an encouragement and a challenge. You mentioned earlier, maybe even a wake up call for some people, but. Um, I believe that God is going to use this, and the early evidence of that is kind of overwhelming to us. Well, kind thank, of astounding. Thanks very, very much for being with us today, Dr. Jeremiah on 100 Huntley Street. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, as always, tune in every day, and you'll see uh, great truth from amazing people to encourage you, press you on, and help you make sense of this crazy world we're yeah, living in. Yeah.